Hello math learners! Check this out! Square root of any number. What is the square root of 4? Square root of 16? Square root of 36? Square root of 64? Square root of 100? Basically, if we get the principal root of these numbers, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 64 is 8. And the square root of 100 is 10. That's easy. However, what is the square root of 8? Square root of 12? Square root of 30? Square root of 200? These numbers are not perfect squares. So, you want to know the secret and the matrix behind it? Well, finish this video and I will teach you how. But before anything else, hit the subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool clear math videos just like this. Math learners, welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. This is still your free access math teacher Ash, and today we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency based lesson for quarter one of the grade seven mathematics, which is all about the square root of a number. Now, earlier in our intro, it is very easy to get the square root of a perfect square, meaning a number that has a certain principal root for its answer. Example of that is the square root of 100. The principal root is 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. The big challenge here is that what if you are given a number that is not a perfect square like square root of 8, square root of 12, square root of 30, and square root of 200. These numbers are what we call irrational numbers because they will yield a number if simplified a decimal number with a non-repeating, non-terminating numbers, meaning it doesn't end and it doesn't repeat. Okay, so how do we get the approximation of this given square roots? Okay, so let us try first the square root of 8. Now, the technique here is very simple. First, you need to think what two perfect square in which the square root of 8 is located. Okay, now, the next perfect square after square root of 8 is square root of 9. The previous perfect square of 8 is square root of 4. So basically, square root of 8 is in between the square root of 4 and square root of 9. Okay. Square root of 4, the principal root is 2. Square root of 9, the principal root is 3. Okay. So now what you can do here is you get the difference of these two Pairs, pair of 4 and 8, and pair of 8 and 9. What is the difference? 4 and 8, the difference is 4. 8 and 9, the difference is 1. Now, question. In which perfect square does square root of 8 is nearer? Okay, the answer is square root of 9. Okay, now if we already located the nearer perfect square, what we can do is we will use its principal root. So that is 3. Now, this is the rule. If the principal root is in the right side, okay, what you will do is you will subtract. Okay? Now, the question is, what will you subtract? You will subtract it to the fraction of twice the principal root, that is 6. You will put it in the denominator side. And then your numerator will be the difference of those two numbers, 8 and 9. The difference is 1. Okay, so that is 1. Now, what you will do here is you simplify 1, 6. Now, if you simplify 1, 6, that is 1 divided by 6. If you divide 1 over 6 or 1 divided by 6, the result will become 0 0.167. Okay, or 1 point, point 1.16667. Okay, or it will never end. Okay, technically, the answer is 0 0.167. Okay. Because it will never end. Now, what you will do is you subtract 3 to 0.167. So that is 3. You will just add 3 zeros because we are considering 3 values after the decimal point. So this will become 0.167. Okay, we will subtract them. This will become 10, 9, 9, and this will become 2. So this is 3. 
this is 3 and this is like hmm, 8 and then 2 so that is 2.83 now having this result what you need to do next is to round this off to its hundredth term or hundredth place value and that is 2.83 so therefore the approximation of square root of 8 is 2.83 when we say approximation the correct answer is nearly there now let's check whether we are really correct and if we use the calculator the final answer for square root of 8 is 2.828427 and so on and so forth this is non-repeating non-terminating so it will just continue on that scenario but by getting its approximated value if we round off this number that is approximately 2.83 which is just the same to our answer is it right now let us consider our next number now for our next number we have square root of 12 square root of 12 is not a perfect square right but what is the next perfect square after square root of 12 that is square root of 16 and the number previous or the perfect square that is previous of square root of 12 is square root of 9. So the principal root of square root of 9 is 3. The principal root of the square root of 16 is 4. What you need to do is you get the difference. The difference of 12 and 9, that is 3. The difference of 12 and 16, that is 4. So basically, which is nearer? Okay, so this is the one, right? So, if the principal root that was chosen is in the left side, meaning that is 3, what you will do is you will add. Okay. How much will you add? Twice of 3, that is 6. And then you will use this one. Okay. So, that is basically 3 plus 3 over 6 is 1 half. That is 0 0.5. So, if you add them, that is 3.5. So basically, the approximate value of square root of 12 is 3.5. Now, let us check whether we are correct. And using the calculator, the approximate value of square root of 12 is 3.464106 and so on and so forth. Question, if you simplify this, you are near in 3.5. Very easy, right? Now, this is very handy, my dear math learners, especially if you have a test that is a multiple choice. And by doing so, by knowing this kind of technique, you will now know what is the nearest approximate value of those given numbers. Now, let us try more examples in getting the third example. Okay, math learners, in getting the third example, we have square root of 30. Now, what is the next Perfect square after square root of 30, that is square root of 36. What is the previous perfect square before square root of 30? That is square root of 25. The principal root of 25 is 5. The principal root of square root of 36 is 6. Now, what you will do is you get the difference. That is 5. That is 6. So, since 30 is much nearer in 25 therefore we will use the principal root of 5 then we add them because it is in the left side so we add them to its fraction twice of 5 that is 10 okay and then the difference is 5 so it's still one half so the answer is 5.5 therefore the approximate value of square root of 30 is 5.5 now let us try whether we are correct in square root of 30 and the approximation of square root of 30 in the calculator is 5.47722255 and so on and so forth basically if you if you round off 5.47722255 that is near 5.5 and we are still correct now let us go to our final example okay math learners for our final example we have square root of 200 now, square root of 200 is quite big, right? Okay, but the next perfect square after 200 is basically 225. And the previous perfect square of square root of 200 is 
square root of 196. Now, the question is, what is the principal root of square root of 225? That is 15. What is the principal root of square root of 196? And that is 14. So, basically, they are just preceding numbers. Okay. Okay, so now, we will try to which perfect square is it here? 196 to 200, that is 4. 200 to 225, that is 25. So, it is much nearer here in the square root of 196. So, therefore, we will use 14. Then, we add it. Okay? And then, we get twice of 14, that is 28. And then, what is the difference? That is 4. So, basically, that is 14 plus. If you simplify this, this will become 1 over 7. Now, what is the answer when you divide 1 over 7? Okay, when we divide 1 divided by 7, we add an index, okay? So, that is 1, that is 7, that is 3, so we add again, that is 4, that is 28, so that is 2, we add again 0, and that is 2, so that is 14, and then we add again 6, we add 0, and that would give us 8, so that is 56, that is again 4, and so on and so forth. So let's just get the last, the first three digits, so 1, 4, 3, okay. So that is 14 plus 0 0.143. So basically, the answer is 14.143, or if we round this off to our nearest hundreds, that is 14.14. Now, let us check whether our approximation is correct to the long approximation given by the calculator. And that is 14.14, 21, 35, 62, and so on and so forth. And if we round off this, that is 14.14, which is just the same to what we have just discussed. Okay, and this is the time that I will challenge you whether you have understood our topic for today, and here it is. Okay, math learners, I hope you have a wonderful time knowing the simple matrix about getting the square root of any number, especially in the square root of irrational numbers. Now, if you do have some questions, some inquiry about this topic, kindly put your inquiries in our comment section below, as well as your amazement if you are amazed to this video. I hope you can share this to your friends, classmates, and your schoolmates. This is still your free access math teacher Ash. And always remember, it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you so much. God bless and keep safe always. Congratulations, math learners, for arriving to this part of the video. If you think that this video has helped you, click that like button. And if you think that this channel can change the way you see mathematics, do not forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you.